want to talk about Australian literature, or literature in general. The Power of the Pen. So far I've written and published four books. The first one I wrote is Spiritual Education and the Curriculum Framework. A Vision for Public Education in Western Australia. I published that in 2003. Then I wrote a book called Praying for the Nation, A Vision for the Commonwealth of Australia. I published that in 2003. It talks about the promotion of the New Testament teaching in Australian schools, also political and economic ideas that I have, um, and employment ideas that I have about Australia. Also, then I published Faith and Politics, a framework for Australian social and political life. I published that in 2005 which talks about using New Testament values to provide better political leadership. I also have a Master of Education specialising in leadership and management and I've been teaching for 17 consecutive years. So I have experience as a teacher and also as a researcher. I do an enormous amount of research and writing and publishing. So I talk about, um, in this book, my ideas using New Testament values to create a better political and economic vision for Australia. And the last one I published, Enough is Enough, Analysis of September 11th, Afghanistan and Iraq. And I published that in 2006. It's about the Twin Towers that were blown up in New York. There were seven buildings that were destroyed in that event and um, basically the government was involved in destroying with high-tech explosives. If you look at the rate at which those buildings came down, one of them came down faster than the law of gravity. So the only way that a building can be destroyed like that is by high-tech explosives pulling it down. All the research evidence at the time uh, provided 95% evidence of that this is correct and there's hardly any evidence in existence and since then there's been a lot more literature produced proving that um, the government was involved in it. Also the government's side of the story, their side of the story, there is actually very little evidence in existence to support the government's or the political um, side of the story at that point in time and, and now as well there's very little evidence for their even looking at the planes, when you analyse the bottom of the plane, there is a, a missile. That's a military plane, it's not a commercial plane. There is slow frame shots um, in documentary video evidence where people have analysed the, the plane. There is actually some sort of military pod attached to the bottom of the plane, a missile, um, some sort of explosive attached to the bottom of these planes. So they were automated planes and that was done by the government. And they used... Um, Arabs and Muslims to to basically try to make out that it was them. I'm very much a supporter of Christian values and New Testament values. I don't support other religious doctrines, which I consider other religious doctrines to be false religious doctrines. So, so I'm not making excuses for anybody, but we're just looking at the evidence, the evidence available. There is a missile attached to the bottom of these planes, and it and these planes were automated to fly into these buildings by probably by the US military. That's the evidence throughout the world. Um, in the majority supports that position about 90% of the evidence and the literature produced on this subject. So I don't know what can be done about it. It's up to the Americans to fight for justice in, in that regard and, um, and and I'm happy to support that as well because politicians shouldn't use their position for evil, which a lot of them do unfortunately. So anyway, talking talking about talking about literature, I'm a great promoter of, um, of, of writing and literature pr produce and in particular free speech. And I believe freedom of speech is is one of the most important rights in life. It's very powerful, the power of speech, the power of the pen to transform a nation into something great. It is to be used, I believe, for good things, for uh, promoting good and uh, promoting justice. Speech and the power of the pen is to be used to create a better society, a good society, a more just society, a fairer society, a more equitable society, and to promote freedom as well, promote freedom for people. So, so where we have more freedom, freedom of speech and the freedom to write literature at length, 
we have a better society, we have less injustice, and people are then able to um, develop their gifts and talents and fulfil their potential. Educationally, I promote that as a great vision. And, and it's true that where speech is limited in a nation and the power of the pen, literature is limited, then there's more oppression and injustice and cruelty. So where a nation has more freedom to speak and freedom to write and publish and, and um, write and publish literature, it creates a much better society. That's a basic economic principle. In education, it's an economic, um, it's a basic principle in education, it's a basic principle in, in, in democracy and good leaders in politics in terms of good leadership, uh, effective leadership. Great leaders, they promote freedom of speech, they promote the power of the pen and literature to um, improve society, enhance society, help society, support society, allow people to develop their gifts and talents and reach and fulfil their potential. So we have a lot of politicians in our country at the moment in Australia where they are using tax money to destroy people's fundamental rights and freedom to freedom of speech. And there's been times when they've even harassed and uh, oppressed writers and academics. Uh, the Howard government did that. So at the end of their um, term, the last towards the end of their term, that's why they got voted out. That was one reason, because they're becoming like dictators. So, so good political leadership promotes freedom of speech and democracy, democratic values. The ability and encouragement to write literature and produce literature, publish literature for the benefit of the nation. I'm a very strong supporter of that and um, it needs to be encouraged. It's more important than anything. Freedom of speech is more important, a lot more important than even defamation because if you speak about public people, name them and talk about them at length um, in the pursuit of justice, if they are engaging in injustice or cruelty against people in our nation, it's right to do that. It's right to do that. If you're going to upset a few people in the process, well, too bad. Because people have to be accountable. Leaders have to be accountable for their decisions and for their rhetoric. So, so this idea that politicians will limit the media or limit free speech or create laws where um, media outlets are limited or they try and restrict and inhibit free speech. They're wrong to do that. They are wrong to do that. They are abusing their position and they're abusing power when they do that. The most important, one of the most important media outlets in the world is YouTube because it's free. People are able to express their views freely and it's a great medium through which um, great change can be, be made. Uh, there are people in politics and in corporate media who who criticise and condemn social media but in, in effect it really is the only true media in existence. Because political rhetoric and action and corporate media and the manipulation and control of corporate media has distorted the truth. It doesn't provide freedom for people. It provides a certain voice, a particular view that's coming through by a particular group of people or number of people. So you hear the same views all the time from the same people and they are the people in power. That's not true media. True media is where everyone has the freedom to speak freely and write freely. And therefore social media is a way to empower people who don't have a voice or whose views don't have another medium through which to express their views. Perhaps they're not capable of writing a book. Perhaps they're not capable of getting a t group together and delivering a speech. So therefore they, they must have an, a media outlet to to voice their um, views and concerns and the issues that are important to them. Freedom of speech is like air and water. It is essential to survival. It is a very powerful mechanism which is fundamental and inherent to, to a human being and the quality and characteristic of humans to express themselves and, and speak freely. And without it, there is an injustice. Without it, there is oppression. Without it, there is evil can increase. But where there's freedom, where there's freedom to speak and write, then issues come out into the light. They come out into the light and they are exposed. And any wrongdoing then is exposed. And then justice can be pursued. 
So it is tremendously important. It's as important. It is as important as water. It is as important as food. It is as important as air, the air we breathe. Freedom of speech is inherent to to who humans are and and the pursuit of their um, gifts and talents and the pursuit of creating a better society in any nation. Thank you very much.